Hey guys, I have really missed y'all. It's been a while since I've posted. There's been a whole bunch going on over at my house that I will update y'all on, but for right now, I wanna tell y'all where I am. I am at my friend's house, his name is Roger, in our neighborhood on the main, this is the main drag that goes all the way back to the golf club house here. And so Roger was kind enough to lend us his time and his tractor. If you'll remember whenever we took out the two middle beds in my front lawn and he took out all those camellias for me. And so today I'm here at his house and I'm going to be planting some Asiatic Jasmine in the three areas here, there, and down there. Uh, that are right off this main road outside of his house. And so I thought y'all might think that it was interesting to see uh, another part of our neighborhood. So this is Roger's house and he has a gorgeous home that has a really great view of the lake here uh, that leads up to the golf course. And this is called the Royal Parkway and it's kind of like the main drag in our neighborhood that lots of traffic and lots of people travel every day and so what we're doing is I'm putting in some Asiatic Jasmine for Roger since he was so kind to lend us himself and his tractor when we were doing the major project in our front landscape so we kind of bartered and decided that since he did that for me I would do this for him I've already been out here a couple of weeks ago and got started we're just putting it at 45 degree angles in rows and this stuff is great because like it can take a ton of abuse and harsh conditions and really you just put it in and water it in and leave it alone and it spreads and becomes like a mound of really pretty ground cover and so that's what Roger and I both thought that would be really nice here by his mailbox and out in front of his home. So I doubt I will get all this done today because it's a lengthy process, but we'll see how much I get done. All right, let's get started. So I ran out of jasmine, so I had to jump in the car. I'm heading right up the road to my house to grab another flat. And I have 11 more to plant and I'll be done with the one section. So I think that that's gonna be it for me today. And I'm trying to do this in phases. So, uh, so that way it's not too overwhelming all in one day. Anyway, I'll feel really good about getting this one section done today.
Hey y'all, so we're back at my house now. I just wanted to show y'all what's going on here in the garden. My favorite winter flower, violas. I love the orange. Those need water. We removed the two distillium that were in front of these boxwoods and we extended the annual beds and John put in some yellow violas, and now the box would show up a lot more. And we put the distillium in the back. We took out the drift roses and added blue Pacific juniper. There's four over here, and there's also some over by the driveway. They'll get about six feet wide and probably about one foot tall. And before long, there'll be a nice blue tinted ground cover on this side and the other side, as well as three Pacific juniper here. We removed the little lime hydrangea hedge that was over by the driveway and put them all in this one bed. So in the spring and summer, hopefully this will be just a cascade of wonderful limelight blooms. This Eagleston holly looks really rough right now. I don't know if it's gonna live. dwarf monday grass underneath this topiary. This was John's brilliance. This will spread and so hopefully eventually we'll have wonderful that textural grass covering the space. Here we are at the cottage garden. We took out the crepe myrtle and placed this blood good Japanese maple right here in the corner. And put these three azaleas around it in sort of a half circle. These are autumn twist and they're really showing off right now. They look beautiful. Excuse the shadow. So we have things that are looking real pretty right now. The purple cone flower, I think, are enjoying this cooler weather. The Miss Lemon Abelia here has put on a lot of new little growth and that's exciting.
We've got a little bank of four azaleas. These are autumn carnation. It's just a bubblegum pink, pretty bloom. There's a blue point juniper that I put there in the corner and I've got boxwoods in a line that one day will be cone shaped just like these so I'm going to continue that all across the back we put in three different kinds of agapanthus on either side of the back porch steps and extended these beds out and curved. More azaleas. One of my favorite contrasts are these Japanese yew with the Oakland holly behind. I just think it's beautiful. So that's a good combo to use if you're looking for an evergreen hedge. We moved, or John moved, the gray owl juniper up to the front of this bed here. Took out those little lime hydrangeas that were right here and it made a whole lot of sense because during the winter months those limelight hydrangeas are not going to be anything but sticks so here we have a really nice blue pop and it's going to look good all year round we put in shishi camellia sasanqua these are the smaller variety of camellia that bloom pink and They'll end up getting probably about three to four feet tall and wide. Not huge. We placed a row of Lamandra breeze grass along the curve of this bed. And so this stuff is glorious when planted in mass. So it's just, it's going to be amazing whenever it reaches full size. Now, let me show you John's brilliance. Now, if you're new to the channel, I live next door to my parents. So, John has created this great walk through connecting my yard and my parents' yard with the leftover hollies, summer robin hollies, and summer Oakland hollies, and the miscanthus grass. Okay, the distillium that we removed from in front of the two boxwoods, as well as three more distillium that I already had, John placed in front here. This is the beginning of the natural area here. You can see the golf course in the back. Little Japanese maple, a weeping Japanese maple right there some variegated hydrangea that was in the bed off the driveway that just wasn't doing well there. Some new additions to the garden. This is mountain laurel that I bought up at Scottsdale Farms in Georgia. There's a row of four of them. This is a carol. This is Raspberry Glow. This one, as you can see, has a smaller leaf. It is called Tiddlywinks. And it also is pink. 
So these are going to, let's see how big they get. I don't think it tells me. Yeah, it does. It grows four feet tall and wide, zones five through nine. I'm new to the mountain laurels, so I don't know what to expect with these, so I'm so excited. I let John loose in my yard, y'all, and I'm so happy that I did. He used a lot of the plants that I had already. We bought some. Some of it is the same as it was, and then a lot of it we just kind of refigured. The truth is, I was so in over my head with this new landscape, you know, because I came from a cottage garden. If you go back in my videos to see the beginning of my, of my channel, you'll see the big, huge difference. Look at that, Akuba, y'all. This is called Akuba japonica, and it is a shade lover. And it's going to eventually get pretty big. Um... I might say six feet tall. I could be wrong about that, but it gets pretty big and it just loves the shade and it brings such a brightness to the shade with its variegated. It's also called a gold dust plant. And then I want y'all to check out the blooms on this soft caress Mahonia. There's even a bumblebee on it right now. Also a shade lover. And I made John put in my Francis Mason Abelia. He, he, not that he didn't want to, but this is probably not the best spot for it because it's not getting a lot of sun. So it's probably going to get leggy. He's probably going to be right like he normally is. And then I have to, uh, I just have to learn for myself that something's not going to work. <laughs> So he knows I'm hard headed and I'm just going to do it <laughs> and then realize later that he was right. So we laugh about that. But anyway, he came in and he kind of rescued me because, I mean, it would have taken me years and years to accomplish all of this just being one person. And on top of that, really just getting bogged down and you know how to design a huge landscape it was just a little bit overwhelming here's one of my deciduous azaleas yes i am just learning that there are some azaleas that lose their leaves in the winter time this is called spring sensation it's going to be bubblegum pink, six to eight feet tall, and then six feet wide. It's already the same. It's already as tall as I am. So it's about, over, it's a little over five feet. There's the um, Everillo, Carex Everillo grass, the lime green shade grass. It takes part sun that John planted around this tree. Olympic Fire Mountain Laurel. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Four and a half tall and four wide. So, as you can see, this has been done in layers. Okay. Layers. One of the most important things 
that a garden can have. So there's a layer of, let's see, let me show you guys. So this is Japanese spreading you. Very similar texture to the Japanese U, except this is a smaller, uh, more compact, like stout version, and it grows outward, hence spreading you and not in the shrub shape. Then three Mojo Pittosporum. And I might not have picked the greatest time of day to be doing this video, so just please ignore the shadows that are happening. So anyway, we've got three Mojo Pittosporum, and there is a row of more Shishi Camellia Sisanqua. Behind that, Mountain Laurel, a planter with my favorite yellow Viola. Three of the deep purple, was it Carl's deep purple? rhododendrons that I got also at Scottsdale Farms. And distillium lovers, this is a huge distillium that John gave me. And I believe the name of it is is it cast in bronze? I can't remember what he said the name of it was. Something about bronze. I had taken out an overgrown Indian hawthorn right in front of this pine when we first moved in and some really old spent azalea. And I told John, I think I need something with height here. Like I want there to be a really uh, visual weight a really nice like visual weight here in front of this pine tree and so he brought this distillium and it looks a little bit shocked right now but I'm coming along every so often and helping it lose its brown leaves which will hasten the progress of it putting out new it'll really put out new in the spring I believe this is a coral bark Japanese maple. It's got its fall color right now. Some arborvita fern, good shade fern. They spread, it's a ground cover. Beautiful, awesome fall color. Variegated batsia. Bradori spirea lining the course. There's three of them. So that was a lot to cover. I hope that I did a good job trying to explain to you guys the new things that are going on here. Um, I have such a sense of relief having so many things in the ground and having a design that I really, really love. And I can't wait until things kind of put on a little bit of maturity because I think it's going to be spectacular one day soon. There's a little hydrangea bloom. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed our walkabout today. I did. I was real excited to show y'all what's been going on. Thanks for your patience. It's hard to get out and do a video when there's so much going on. But um, anyway, thank y'all for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.